Welcome to the Real Estate Syndication Show. Whether you are a seasoned investor or building a new real estate business, this is the show for you. Whitney Sewell talks to top experts in the business. Our goal is to help you master real estate syndication. And now your host, Whitney Sewell. Who is Vinny Smile Chopra? Came to the U.S. from India with $7 in his pocket, and today he has created a portfolio of over $200 million in commercial real estate. He's a CEO of five companies, acquiring and managing diverse multifamily portfolio of 3,500 units, and his team self-manage all the assets. Vinny has walked the walk with over 26 successful syndications during multiple economic cycles, including downturns over 12 years. He has built a very extensive educational academy to teach and mentor investors. Vinny, tell us about this multifamily syndication academy. Thank you, Whitney. Thank you so much. I'm really proud to really talk to everybody about this extensive multifamily academy that teaches new and sophisticated investors how to use other people's money through syndications. That has been my world, to buy apartments from 50 units to 500 units, and how to select emerging markets, how to do deal analyzing, investor education, other people money, syndication blueprints, everything I have learned, I teach in this academy. And over 500 lectures, and also how to manage the assets also, and along with lots of great templates and PowerPoints, everything. And I personally also mastermind coach all my students every Wednesday. So to reach me, Whitney, all the students have to, or investors have to just text the word learn, L-E-A-R-N, learn to 474747 or call my team at 925-766-3518. This is your daily real estate syndication show. I'm your host, Whitney Sewell. Today, our guest is Trevor McGregor. Thanks for being on the show, Trevor. Thank you for having me. Great to be here. I'm honored to have Trevor on the show. I've met him at a couple of events and, and heard him speak at the Best Ever Conference last year and looking forward to uh, seeing him again this year, uh, actually this week as we record this. Uh, but uh, Trevor is a master platinum coach with over 20,000 hours of coaching experience. Uh, he worked with clients from around the world, including Fortune 500 executives, high-level real estate investors, entrepreneurs, wor world-class athletes and professionals. He's also... And this is a big plus uh, as far as coaching people like myself and other people in the industry. He's an active real estate investor, and he's he, uh, holding assets in his portfolio from single-family homes uh, in Vancouver to multifamily apartment buildings in Texas uh, to self-storage units uh, in Key West, Florida. So, you know, Trevor, I'm excited to have you on the show. I really appreciate your time, and I just I know the expert expertise you're, you're going to bring and the content, you know, to the, to the listeners today. Uh, but obviously, give, give the listeners a little bit about your background, and, uh, and we're, let's jump right in. Awesome. Well, thank you for that. And yes, I am a master platinum coach. And, you know, I didn't just arrive at being a coach without, you know, obviously going through, you know, I'd say a traditional upbringing, born to a middle class family, went to university, studied business, got into corporate, you know, went and worked for the man. And ultimately, I worked for a long time, Whitney, in the real estate and hospitality company. So I worked for a company that owned a whole bunch of restaurants and retail centers and strip malls and all of this stuff. And you know, I loved it because I was always dealing with people. You know, I was always, you know, dealing with site selection or procurement or something in finance or marketing or HR or something. And so in my early 20s and 30s, I had a well-rounded view of business. And around that time, you know, I started to invest in my own real estate portfolio. I started buying just one little condo and that was a good experience. So I bought a townhouse and then I took the money out of those and leveraged that to buy my first duplex. And man, that is when I learned what cash flow was. And once you learn what cash flow was, you want to go buy more. So I bought another duplex, another fourplex, and a lot of those things that, you know, really allowed me to scale quickly. And at that same time, I was also studying personal growth. I was big into Tony Robbins, Zig Ziglar, you know, Jim Rohn, a lot of the classics. And um, really between the corporate work, my real estate portfolio, and, and doing a lot of personal development, you know, throw on a wife and a couple of kids at that time. And, you know, it was a busy, busy lifestyle, but I loved it. 
Wow. Yeah. I mean, getting getting into the real estate business and already having a family, kids, it, it's a lot to manage. Uh, and I appreciate that you've also been in those shoes, you know, and coaching so many, uh, you, you can relate. But, you know, one thing I really like about Trevor, you know, especially coaching, uh, you know, he, he's, he's coached many people that I know and that I work with and, and many people that are uh, ultra successful in this business. And, and uh, you know, Trevor has... Uh, we were talking about these five keys to scaling as a syndicator and, and Trevor, I, I, you know, let's jump right in. I'd love for you to just lay these out and, you know, help the listeners. Uh, the listeners are, are syndicators. They're trying to grow their business. And I know you're the man for them to talk to and, and uh, helping them grow that business. So let's get started. Absolutely, Whitney. And it's really fascinating because all of my time in corporate being a real estate investor, you know, doing personal growth. And I went on to work with Tony Robbins. If you know, Anthony Robbins, he's one of the world's most, you know, unbelievable guys that is not just a lifestyle or a life coach, but he's also a business strategist. So as I did all of these in my 20s, 30s, early 40s, I had a unique perspective on what worked and what didn't work for business owners, for franchise owners, for Fortune 500 executives, and believe it or not, for real estate investors, because there's a saying that says, success leaves clues. And if success leaves clues, well, so does failure. And I started to really, you know, connect the dots on why people just couldn't scale, you know, whereas others like, you know, my client Joe Fairless was able to go from owning four single family homes to now owning, you know, over half a billion dollars worth of real estate. He's got 5,210 units to date and, you know, him and Frank are going to be buying more. But what allows a guy to go from where he is to that level? And I've summarized it into five things. And so what I'll do with you and your listeners is, I'll share the five keys that hold people back from scaling to the heights that they really could. And we have to kick it off with number one. And it's my favorite one because it's a lot of, you know, I would say where I come in and, and as a coach, a teacher, a mentor, a trainer, a facilitator, we spend a lot of time on limiting beliefs. That is, if you think you can't, you won't. And if you think you can, you can. And I know it sounds cliche, but Whitney, the world is sped up so fast. And, and as a real estate investor, you wear all these different hats. You know, you got to go out there and look for deals. You got to go out there and look for capital and you got to look for more investors and you got to deal with property management. And so with all of this stuff coming at us all day long, and I know the same is for you, where you have to stand guard at the door of your mind and not let, you know, a bad deal that you didn't get throw you out of the game. Or maybe your property manager screwed up somewhere and that triggers you. Or maybe an investor that said they're putting 50 grand into a deal doesn't put 50 grand into the deal and now you're short. So what I do is I help people, you know, again, get real with who they are, what they want, why they want it, and have a very strong mind in, you know, staying on course no matter what obstacles or, you know, roadblocks come in the way. Does that make sense? It does. You know, and I remember, you know, even at the conference, uh, looking over some of my notes, you know, you talked about 80% uh, psychology, how you think, and 20% mechanics. And, you know, I appreciated, you know, just how you laid that out. Um, I, I can relate to that for sure. If you think you can, you, you can. If you think you can't, you can't. Yeah, it really is. And again, we go through different cycles. I mean, it's not just one time we say, okay, here's what I want. And then we go get it in a straight line. I've never seen a real estate investor in my time and certainly hasn't been my experience that just constantly goes up and up and up and up. There are speed bumps. There are things that happen, whether it is external like interest rates or external like something Donald Trump does or external in, you know, what's going on in the economy or it's internal. It's the way that you're feeling about something or the way that you're being triggered by something or the way that you are you know, seeing through a certain lens. Well, maybe I'm the guy that helps you take off those lenses and put on a better lens because you can only control what you can control. You know, we can't control what interest rates do. We can't control what the market does. No, I don't think we can control Trump. We might influence it, but you know, we can't control it. So again, stand guard at the door of your mind. And that's the first step in really owning your opportunity to scale your business. Oh, I like that. It is so important. I can relate for sure. Yep. You bet. Number two is really, really fascinating as well. And that is lack of a strategic plan. Hmm. I mean, come on. If you don't know what the end game is, if you don't have an idea of where you want to go, whether that's how big you want to build your portfolio, how many doors you want to own, which markets you want to be in, which asset class you want to be in, you know, you're fooling yourself. And most people are out there winging it. They're like, well, I want to buy property in 2019. 
And I come in and say, well, let's reverse engineer a little bit more about what that looks like. So we start to reverse engineer it and then we build a blueprint to get there. And I mean, life's a lot more fun when you know where you want to go and then you've got a roadmap, a recipe or a blueprint that takes you from where you are to where you want to be. But again, most people spend more time planning a vacation than they do their portfolio. And that's something that I really get passionate about is having that clarity, that certainty and that confidence that we can get them where they want to go. Does that resonate with you? It, it does. And, you know, I feel like, you know, myself and, and others uh, also, it's like, well, you know, how big should that goal be? Or, you know, you hear somebody say, I want, you know, 10,000 units in two years or, you know, and other people are like, well, wait a minute, that's just not possible. Or, you know, or then other people are like, no, you know, I can do it, you know? And so, you know, I guess, how do we re make sure that's realistic and something we can shoot for? Oh, that's a super question. I'll give you, a, you know, the nod for that because you chunk it down. We all need to have what we call short-term goals, Whitney. And short-term goals are what we deem to be one year or less. So that is, let's absolutely identify what do we want by the end of December 31st, 2019. And then we can chunk those into, you know, 30-day goals to, to move towards it, 60-day goals, 90-day goals, six-month goals, whatever it is. And then beyond that, we call that a person's vision. So again, goals that are short term or one year or less goals that are long term or one year and more, but we want to have some sort of vision because without a vision, people perish, you know, and I believe that the human spirit needs something to look forward to. It's like Joe Fairless, you know, my client, Joe, you know, he wrote this awesome best ever book. He puts on conferences. He's got his podcast like you. And I see you've got yours. They're all earmarked and dog marked like mine, but you know, Joe and I have set the vision to get to one billion dollars worth of real estate. Now, to a lot of listeners, that might sound crazy, but I'm telling you, it's not if you absolutely know where you want to go and what needs to happen to get there. It's like going up a set of stairs, right? And sometimes you won't know, you know, what's on step number five until you hit steps three and four. But from steps three and four, you can see up higher and you just start, you know, connecting the dots or putting the pieces of the puzzle together. Does that make sense? It does. I appreciate, you know, just you explaining that, how the, the goal it may not be too lofty if you know how to get there, if you know the That's steps. If you, yeah, that, that makes complete sense. You bet. So then we move on to number three. And number three is really, really important as well for the five keys to really wanting to scale your business in real estate. Because, you know, I can help you with your limiting beliefs as a master platinum coach. And I can help you create that roadmap, that recipe or blueprint. But what number three speaks to is the fact that most people aren't taking massive action every day. I mean, come on, if you're not out driving neighborhoods, if you're not out there talking to brokers, if you're not out there talking to investors, talking to property managers, you know, sending direct mail or whatever you do to get leads, you're fooling yourself. You know, that's real estate by hope. And I'm not a guy that allows people to just, you know, hope that deals show up. I'm the one that gets them out there and make sure they're doing the right things in the right order at the right time for the right reasons. Because again, it's, it's systematic. And again, it's not, not that you're going to meetups or it's not that you're going to a conference or that you're reading a great book. It's like, it's frequency. It's how often are you going to meetups? Are you going to more than what the average person does? Are you cultivating relationships with brokers so that they bring you the deals instead of giving them to someone else. So step three is really, you know, working the plan on purpose and with purpose. Does that make sense? It does. It does. Got to have purpose. Got to know why yep. you're doing what you're doing. You bet. And you got to have fun doing it as well because, you know, real estate is a, is a competitive industry. I mean, there's a lot of people out there that are looking to do what everyone else is doing. But, you know, as we check in with your limiting beliefs, we create the plan and we get out there and work the plan. You know what, it's survival of the fittest. And I do believe that real estate is one of the greatest wealth vehicles on the planet. Certainly has been in my life, in your life, and it'll continue to be for all your listeners if they choose to do these five things we're talking about here. Does that resonate? It does, yes, very much so. You bet, yeah. So then we get to have some fun and go into number four. And the cool thing about number four is it's got an ABC to it. So the first part of number four, and again, something that I really, really work with my clients on is time management. Mm. Because I can tell the quality of an investor's life by where they spend their time or by where they don't spend their time. So we work to optimize and maximize their calendar. We work to optimize and maximize what I call the high impact, 
high income, you know, opportunities. And we start to take a look at what should we be outsourcing to other people? You know, should we be doing something, delaying something, delegating it or dumping it? And with the four D's of, of time management, you really start to get clear on, you know, what you should and shouldn't be doing. Does that make sense? It does. I can relate to that as well. You bet. You bet. So then the second part of number four is systems. Now, again, if you're a syndicator or if you're in real estate or if you're in any asset class and you don't have tried and true systems and you're flying by the seat of your pants and recreating things over and over again, again, that's not the best way to run a business. So I help people get crystal clear on what systems they need to really scale and scale for the long term. Because again, a system could be something as simple as a process. It could be something simple as, you know, being able to understand where your, I don't know, your occupancy is or where your accounts receivable is, accounts payable is, having a crisis management binder should the unthinkable happen. I mean, we leave no stone unturned because, you know, life shows up sometimes and, you know, there's nothing that surprises me anymore, but you've got to have systems to deal with what you deal with every day. Does that make sense? It does. It does. That's the only way that I've been able to scale what I've done just in the last few months is by having systems and having a team. That's it. So if number four is time management, number uh, four B is systems. Number four C is communication. Mm. I mean, let's talk about it. How well are you communicating with your property manager? How well are you communicating with your team of advisors, like your coach or your investor network or your meetup group or your insurance agent? You know, how are you communicating with your GCs? You know, how are you communicating with your electricians, your plumbers? And it's not just how are you communicating, but how often, how frequent, and do you know your outcomes with those people? I mean, if you've got uh, opportunity to talk to a property manager and you know that you're, you know, spending money needlessly on something, are you addressing it right then and there? Or are you letting it fester and get you pissed off and then you're gonna bring it up two weeks from now? Because that's not how to run a business either. The other thing that we talk about in communication is really getting specific about what brokers want to hear from investors. What do investors want to hear, you know, when you're asking them to put money into a deal? You know, how do you speak to people to become what I call a master of influence? Because, you know, people say all the time that they're in the, you know, the real estate game. And I say, that's not true. You're in the relationship game. And if you don't have great communication skills, you're leaving money on the table. Would you agree? I agree completely. You bet. So that's really the three parts of number four. And then Whitney, the final one, number five is a lack of accountability. That is, if you don't have somebody like a coach holding your feet to the fire, you know, making sure they're following up in terms of what you said you were going to do, the path of least resistance kicks in for most human beings and they find themselves watching TV or surfing the net or, you know, monkeying around on Facebook when they should be working on, you know, building their business so that one day they don't have to, you know, work in the business. They can work on it and have other people doing everything. So to recap then, if number one is mindset, number two is building a strategic plan. Number three is really executing that plan. Number four is time management, it's systems and it's communication. And number five is have somebody holding you accountable, could be a business partner, could be a coach, could be, you know, a really close friend, doesn't matter. Those are the five things that I've identified that when you as a syndicator, you as an investor, you as a real estate professional own those five things, life becomes so much better and you start having deals fall to you like an avalanche of abundance. You start having people want to put money into your deals. You start having a much better time doing it and... You know, I always say again that, you know, we get one shot around this beautiful blue planet. We should enjoy it and have fun doing it. So there's the five keys to real estate success. And I'll, you know, be open to hear what you think of those. Guys. There's so many things we could talk about. But Trevor, you know, where do you see, you know, especially in the syndication business, because you, know, you coach a lot of syndicators, uh, you know, where's the biggest flaw? Which one of these five do majority of people uh, miss or forget about or not focus yeah. on enough? It really is all five of them, but it's different for different people. And that's why I find that as I work with people throughout the US, Canada, I've got clients in the UK, in Italy, in Australia, New Zealand, even Asia, 
that these five things are universal. Mm. And then it really depends upon what someone's skill set is. So I'll give you an example for me. You know, when I'm out there, I am really a people person. I'll go out there and I love the thrill of the deal. I love the thrill of the chase. I'll talk to the mailman. I'll talk to the milkman. I'll talk to people walking their dog, you know, to find great off-market opportunities, you know, whereas some other people, they're more like a numbers guy. They like to sit and gals too. They like to sit behind a computer and underwrite. You know, they like to look at the financial model. They like to do the P&L statements and all of that stuff. So again, to answer your question, I find that different people need different levels of all of these because at the end of the day, if you don't have these five things, you know, you're not going to scale like Joe Fairless, are you? That's right. That's for sure. And, uh, you know, could you just speak to, uh, you know, before we run out of time, of course, but uh, speak to the, the master of influence, you know, becoming that master of influence through the communication. And could you just go in depth a little bit about that? Yeah, my pleasure. And again, it's something that, you know, after being uh, a master platinum coach with Tony Robbins for half a decade and getting to hang out with that man and see really what allows him to be a master of influence, it really is very simple and boils down to three things. And all three of these things that will help you be a master of influence, ironically enough, start with the letter C as in cookie. So the very first thing that you must have when you're talking to brokers, when you're talking to people that might want to invest, when you're talking to your general contractor, when you're talking to anybody, is certainty. Hmm. You must bring certainty to the conversation. The second C word is clarity. You've got to be crystal clear. And they've got to know exactly what it is. And you've got to know exactly what it is. So now we've got certainty and we've got clarity. And the third one, Whitney, is confidence. You know, if you want to become a master of influence, you have to elevate your emotions and bring up your ability to speak with confidence because people want to deal with someone who's confident. And if you say, well, Trevor, I I don't have the certainty, clarity and confidence I want yet. Note the word yet. Get your butt to more conferences, get to more meetups, listen to Whitney's podcast, listen to Joe Fairless's podcast. You know, again, I said, we're all in the relationship business even more than the real estate business. And I can tell the quality of an investor's opportunities by how much certainty, clarity, and confidence they bring to their communication. Does that make sense? It does. I can, I can relate to that so much. All three of those C's, you know, are things that I'm always trying to improve upon. And, you know, especially over the last year, I can, you know, I've just really been trying to improve upon all, all of those things. I, I can relate completely, you know, in the certainty, you know, I find like you may be lack of education at first, so you're not certain or, you know, you're not even clear. You're not clear because you don't understand this business yet. You know, you haven't been in a deal yet or you haven't talked to enough investors. And, and, and so, yeah, I think part of it too, it goes back to taking massive action and getting out there and making it happen and, and learning. Yeah, it's really that. And that's what I love about your show and, and all of the other opportunities for people to, to shorten the learning curve. Get around people that are already doing what it is you want to do. Hmm. You know, pick up books, listen to podcasts, go to events, there's audios. And there's really nothing new in real estate, really. You know, maybe some blockchain technology will change some stuff or AI but the fundamentals of real estate are already available to anyone who is willing to go after it and learn it, you know? And that's when I talk to people about their identity as well, because if you are a victim to time or you are a victim to maybe I don't have the knowledge or you're a victim to, you know, I don't have much capital, you know, well, what's preventing you from getting out of that victim modality and into being a victor or victorious, you know, go read the books, go to meetups, go to conferences, you know, start out with a small deal and get your feet wet. And that will give you some confidence to start stepping up to the big stuff. Does that make sense? It does. It does. And could you just speak also to uh, time management? You know, I hear it all the time. I'm too busy to do a podcast or I'm too busy to do whatever. You know, I hear that often, as I'm sure you do too. Could you just speak to that, you know, and help, helping us, you know, that feel that we are so busy, quote, unquote, you know, and uh, helping us just manage our time better? I'll do more than just speak to it. I'll give you some keys to the kingdom here. In fact, I'll share with you my proprietary productivity pyramid. So if you can think of it as a pyramid, a triangle, you know, with four spaces in that triangle, the very first space at the bottom is what we call no or low value. That is where you're doing things in your day that really don't give you much bang for your buck. I mean, you might be doing the dishes, watching TV, you know, um, going to the store to get ink for your printer, 
Those are all things that keep people somewhat busy, but they don't really help you grow your real estate business, do they? No. So then we go up to the second level and that's where we call it low dollar value. Now you're doing something that is getting you ready to make money. It's definitely better than the first level because in the second level, maybe you're preparing a PPM. Maybe you are you know, doing some research in a certain neighborhood. Maybe you're compiling a list of investors. You know, So we've got level one, now we've got level two, that is low dollar value. Then we go up, and this is where it gets fun, Whitney, we go up to level three on the pyramid, and that's called high dollar value. That is where you are out there doing something that is going to potentially put money in your pocket. Maybe you're you know, walking the building and you're about to put in an offer. Maybe you are pitching to a group of investors to each bring in 50K to your deal. You know, maybe you're doing something to optimize and maximize an opportunity. But level three is where you're doing it, where there's a massive opportunity to actually get an ROI on that specific thing you're doing. That's level three. And then level four, the very tip top of the triangle is called high lifetime value. That is where you're doing something with your time that brings lifetime value to you. Maybe you're reading a book, you know, and my Bible is think and grow rich. You know, I've read this so many times. I've listened to the audio. That is high lifetime value. I will always carry that forward. Maybe you're going to an event. Maybe you're listening to this podcast. Maybe you're working out. You know, maybe you're spending quality time with your family and your kids outside of real estate. So it fills up your cup in other areas. So really, the, when I talk about these four levels, I also give them colors. And so level one is what I call brown time. It's shit time. It means that, you know what, it's probably not going to give you much bang for your buck. Level two is what I call light green time. You know, kind of like the color of money, but it's light green. Level three is also green, but it's called dark green. That's when you're doing things that can bring you some nice dark green cash. And then the very tip top level four is called gold time. That is where you're doing things again that fill up your cup, that make you feel good. You know, my wife and I, we travel a lot. We do a lot of speaking. We do a lot of things in Australia, Costa Rica, New York. We were in Paris this year. We were in Hong Kong. And so we include travel in that gold time up there. And that's also where you can add massive value to other people. So this podcast, I would say, is complete gold time. You know, if your listeners are listening to you and I right now, that is not brown. That is not light green. That is not dark green. That is seriously gold time. And Whitney, I got to give you a shout out and honor you for the work that you do as well. But does that pyramid make sense when you ask me to speak to time management? It, it does. And I appreciate the shout out as well. And, and I, I can I was just thinking about how I can relate to that triangle because it's all those low value tasks that, you know, just kind of bombard your day. And before you know, if you haven't planned your day or if you hadn't thought through that, then, you, you know, you've wasted your day doing all this minuscule nothing. It's another reason I suggest people hiring an assistant, you know, or a virtual assistant of some kind, or, you know, so you can start giving those tasks to somebody because you won't even realize how many you're doing until you have somebody available that can do them, you know, for you. So you can start handing them off. That's it. And that's a huge distinction in itself that, you know, you've got to know what is an hour of your time worth, you know, and should you be outsourcing something to someone else? Because it's important. I mean, we don't say that all brown or light green activities are bad because, you know, if you don't keep track of your records and you don't file things and you don't, you know, all do all of those things, the IRS is going to come back and it's going to haunt you. Right. But you also have to do what you spoke to. And that is know when your dark green activities are for your day, hmm. plan them, time block them, you know, because that's where you're going to scale. That's where you're going to make a return. And then obviously scheduling those gold activities as well. But that's what I see a lot of my clients doing. That's what Tony Robbins does. It's what I do. And I'm telling you again, success leaves clues. It obviously does. It's obviously worked. Uh, Trevor, you've been an, a, just an amazing guest. I really appreciate your time. I want to get a few more questions in before we have to go. You know, is there a way that you have recently improved your business uh, that we could all apply to ours, uh, maybe outside of what we've talked today? whether it's a piece of software or whether it's something you use daily, anything. Yeah, I guess for me, you know, I have really diversified, even though, you know, I've, I've done syndications with Joe and with Dave Thompson and, and Julie Lamb and Annie Dickerson and some, some other people, you know, I've, I've 
always believed that I want some different opportunities to have different streams of capital or cash coming in. So obviously as a, a master platinum coach, that's one income stream for me. I do consulting, that's another income stream. I do keynote speaking, that's a third income stream. Obviously my real estate is a fourth income stream, but I'm always of the belief that we go out there and we believe that there are also other ways for us to add value, you know, that you should really, really, you know, identify what those might be and then act upon them. And for me, that was hiring my own coach. That was where I don't just sit here and talk the talk. I walk the walk. In fact, Whitney, I have two coaches that are helping me grow my business. And I have an accountability partner in Seattle that kicks my butt daily. So again, I think to have a coach, a teacher, a mentor, a trainer, a facilitator, a sounding board, I think it is one of the things that you or your listeners can do to really, you know, optimize and maximize this whole journey. What do you think? It's great. Now, I wanted to ask you, how do you and your accountability uh, partner communicate? Uh, it's by phone and email, sometimes okay. text, but a lot of emails back and forth, uh, phone calls every Monday night that last for an hour, and then sporadic phone calls throughout the week. But it's a, just a chance to check in, and it's literally 30 minutes you know, what are your three to thrive? What are the top three things that you're working on in real estate? You know, what's working, what's not working. And then we banter and talk a little bit about our families and I've got three boys and I play high level sports. And, you know, so we obviously, you know, use a little bit of time for that as well. But I ask all of you, if there were three things that you should be doing right now to grow your real estate business, and we called those your three to thrive, could you identify them? And if you had an accountability partner and you held them accountable for those three this week and they held you accountable for your three this week, do you see how a high tide lifts all boats? Yes. And that's what it's really built around. Yes. I like that. Is your accountability somebody that's kind of at your level in business or, you know, how did you find this person? It is, it is, it absolutely is. In fact, um, I would say that they're ahead of me in certain areas and I'm ahead of them in certain areas. So it's kind of that yin and yang, you know, and, and you always get what you need. I mean, the universe delivers every single time. Mm -hmm. That's like somebody listening to this podcast right now needed to hear some of those five keys to scaling real estate. Someone else needed to hear something on time management. Someone else needed to hear that they got to get rid of those limiting beliefs. Someone else heard they got to be a better communicator, you know, in terms of their certainty, their clarity and their confidence. So just like my accountability partner is who he is and I'm who I am, it's like pitching and catching extraordinarily where we always, you know, hang up that phone, obviously feeling better off that we have each other, but obviously learning something that we didn't know before that call started as well. What's the number one thing that's contributed to your success, Trevor? Number one thing has contributed to my success is, you know, reading Think and Grow Rich. I mean, that was book was written a long time ago, but the fundamentals of really having that white hot desire you know, knowing what you want and why you want it, and then having a defiant commitment to go after it and taking extreme ownership is paramount. And like I said, it does not happen in a straight line. It certainly hasn't to me. I've lost hundreds of thousands of dollars in failed business ventures. You know, I've been through the fire, you know, when it comes to building my own businesses. You know, my mom got cancer. My dad got Parkinson's disease. My best friend died, you know, when we invested in a, a property together unexpectedly. So stuff is going to happen. But having that mental toughness to ask yourself, is life happening to me or is life happening for me hmm. is the biggest distinction I can give people. Because like I said, there are going to be ups and there are going to be downs. It's going to be, you know, summer and then you're going to go through winter. But always, I can assure you that after winter, the summer sun will come out again. Hmm. So you know, Napoleon Hill had a great quote in Think and Grow Rich, and he said that every adversity brings with it the seed of equivalent advantage. That means that everything you go through that isn't to your liking, there's a blessing in it. There's a lesson in it. And I've been through a lot of those, and I'm sure you have as well, because, you know, real estate is one of those things where you're going to hit some speed bumps. You're going to have obstacles. You're going to have roadblocks. But you have to remain defiantly committed to your identity to get over them, around them, under them, or through them. And that's ultimately something that I think by listening to this show, reading great books, going to great conferences, being around like-minded entrepreneurs, you get a bit of that tribal order where you don't have to do it alone. You see other people navigating their journey and you can learn from them and they can learn from you. And there's my best advice to give you today. <laughs> 
I appreciate that, Trevor. And how do you how do you like to give back? I give back in immeasurable ways. I do a lot of pro bono coaching. Uh, we do a lot. My wife and I are doing some cool stuff down in Costa Rica right now with the locals in, you know, building some, some lower income and, and lower family houses down there. We just got back from six weeks in Australia, did some great charity work down there and did some, you know, free keynote speaking there to young groups of entrepreneurs. And yeah, give me an audience and a microphone and I'll get in front of anyone. Wow. Trevor, you've been a great guest. I, I really appreciate your time and, and the, the keys to having a su successful syndicate Syndica uh, syndication business, sorry, and uh, just going through the master of influence and time management. It's been, it's been just phenomenal, and I really appreciate it. Tell the listeners how they can learn more about you. Yeah, it's really very simple. You can always go to uh, www.trevormcgregor.com. That'll be in the show notes, I'm sure, yeah, trevormcgregor.com. Or if any of you are really serious about scaling your business and you really would love an opportunity to connect one-on-one, -on -one, you know, make it available to your listeners. Again, I do one-on-one -on -one coaching, so there's a limited number of people that I can do this with, obviously. But if you are defiantly committed to your journey, just go to www.coachwithtrevor.com. That's coachwithtrevor.com. You'll be able to enter your details, and we'll set up a 45-minute breakthrough session where we'll take a look at your real estate business in terms of what's working, what's not working, and you know, we'll touch on these five keys to success and you know, turn you loose on what you need to do and if, you know, learning a little bit more about how coaching would impact you and your real estate business, we'll talk about that as well. But my primary goal is to serve you on that session. Awesome. Well, what an opportunity. I hope the listeners will reach out to you, Trevor, and connect with you on your website. I hope they'll also go to LifeBridge Capital and connect with me and go to our Facebook group, The Real Estate Syndication Show, where we can all connect and grow our businesses together from experts like Trevor. And we will talk to each of you tomorrow. Thanks so much, Trevor. Boom. There you go, big guy. Yeah, I really I appreciate your was, time. I hope that was helpful. Oh, it was good. It's really good. Yeah, it's, yeah, you're a perfect coach to have on, you know, as far as, especially as many people have you've coached that are in this business. Yeah. And I, you've had so many uh, awesome people on your show as well. I was just looking through it again. And uh, we have a lot of the same peeps in our, in our tribe. So, you know, like I said, thanks for having me on. Keep up the great work and we'll see you on uh, Friday. We'll yeah. See you in Denver. It, any, any way I can provide value to you, Trevor? That is very kind of you to ask. I don't know. Just, you know, speak to your, speak your truth about if anything I've said today resonated with you. And someone says, you know, is Trevor, you know, one of those coaches that is just after your money or is he really there to support mm. you in living a better life? Um, I think you know me by now. We've known each other for a few years and uh, everything that I said in, in that segment of the show is, is really my truths. I call them Trevor's truths. So if somebody wants to learn how to really optimize and maximize life, not just real estate, but life, you know, send them my way and I'd appreciate it. Yeah. Yeah, I definitely will. I've heard nothing but just phenomenal things about you. Awesome. Yeah. And same with you. And we'll see you real soon. Just a few days. Thanks. Great. Th thanks a okay, lot. Trevor. You, Looking you forward it. to it. Bye. Have a good one. Travel you safe. You too. Bye. See you. Thank you for listening to the real estate syndication show brought to you by LifeBridge Capital. LifeBridge Capital works with investors nationwide to invest in real estate, while also donating 50% of its profits to assist parents who are committing to adoption. LifeBridge Capital, making a difference, one investor and one child at a time. Connect online at www.lifebridgecapital.com for free material and videos to further your success.